1 Peter chapter 4 tonight. We're going to read a very relevant passage of Scripture. At verse 17, it says, Peter says, he says, For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. The title of this message tonight is Judgment Begins with the House of God. Okay? Now, if you were to get a phone call one day and somebody very important say Governor Brandstadt okay, yeah. would call you and say that he's going to come to your house in three days and have dinner with you. What kind of things do you think you would do? Clean the house. Clean the house? What else? Get the shotgun? No, I'm just kidding. Give a smart check. It's good. Put the picture of Branstead in my closet back up on the wall. Okay. <laughs> There'd be all kinds of preparations we'd do. We would get our house in order, right? Yeah, absolutely. If it was somebody important, say the Queen of England, if, if you don't want Governor Branstead or, or uh, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu was to come to your house, you'd get your house in order, and you'd have things arranged so he could have a nice time while he's there. All right? Well, in the end days, Scripture tells us that judgment is going to begin in the house of God. And if you believe that we are living in the end days, and many of us do, then judgment's going to begin with us. Now, this isn't a popular message. It's not going to preach out there with... with, in, with those congregations where everything's always feel good all the time and where everything is, you know, light and gladness and joy and happiness and certainly the gospel is all of those. Serving God is all of those things. But if that's all you hear and all you expect, what's going to happen when judgment comes? You may have some difficulties because you don't know how to deal with it. You don't know how to cope with it. Okay? So judgment begins at the house of God. Now one way that God judges His people is by sending a famine of hearing the Word of God. Scripture says that in the last days He's going to send a famine on the land and that famine is going to be of the Word of God. Now, you have, there are all kinds of preachers all over the place preaching, quote, the Word of God. But yet that Word of God that they're preaching is not the real Word of God. It's twisted. It's distorted. It's what people's itching ears, Scripture says, want to hear. It's not the truth of God. I just talked about a group of them, those that preach that everything's light and love and good times and we all feel good and we're all happy and we all go home feeling good and happy and, there, and, and there's nothing wrong with going home feeling good and happy. But if that's all you're expecting, then when trouble comes, you're going to be in trouble. So if judgment begins at the house of God, then the famine of the Word of God in the last days is going to be a plethora of false gospels. Stuff that's going to sound good, but it's not going to be quite true. It's not going to be quite accurate. Uh, some examples would be the name it and claim it gospel, the glab, grab, or the they call it the grab it and blab, blab it and grab it gospel, the you know, if, if you just proclaim it into your life, it has to be. 
But a sovereign God has the right to tell you no. And if a sovereign God, if you believe that if all you have to do is claim it and it's yours, and a sovereign God says no, where did your gospel go? It just fell flat on its face. Because what you believed didn't come true. Another thing that is very popular, that is a false gospel that you will hear in this world today, is that, oh, I don't have to worry about sin because God loves me and He'll forgive me. And understand something, God does love you and God will forgive you. But that's not an excuse to sin. Scripture tells us, and we talked about it, uh, I believe, just last week or, or the week before. Scripture tells us that if we keep on sinning after we receive knowledge of truth, there's no more sacrifice. So we better stop sinning. And yes, God loves us. Yes, God will forgive us if we had. But so many uh, people use that as an excuse to go on sinning. And keep on sin. I call it the, I'm going to do what I want to in God's name instead of doing the will of God. And there's a big difference in that. But yet people, we see this. We hear this preached all the time. I do. Another uh, one. Uh that's preached, that's taught, is all kinds of uh, replacement theology. What is replacement theology? It's, it, it teaches that the church has replaced Israel as the bride of Messiah. That's so wrong. The church doesn't realize who it is in Messiah. They are Israel in Messiah. Paul says, you that were former Gentiles. If you're a former Gentile, that means you're no longer a Gentile. And if you're no longer a Gentile, that means you're an Israelite. So who are we in Messiah? Israelites. Israel is our country. Israel's God is our God. Israel's Messiah is our Messiah. And Israel's Torah is our Torah. Amen. Replacement theology goes deeper than that. It teaches that the Torah has been done away with and replaced by the law of Christ. Which means, essentially, you do what you want to in, in Messiah's name and everything's okay. But that's false teaching. Because the Torah of, of God is the law. And if Yeshua said that he came to not do away with the law, and he said so in Matthew 5, 17, he said not one jot or tittle of it's going to pass away. As long as heaven and earth endure. When I got up this morning, there was a heaven, there was an earth. When I'm, I'm standing before you right now, there's still a heaven and there's still an earth. So guess what? That tells me that the Word of God says the Torah is still good. That's right. All kinds of replacement things. Replace the biblical holidays with phony holidays. We call them Easter and Christmas. And they replace the holidays in the Bible that God said. Why would we not celebrate the ones that the Bible tells us to celebrate? Because it's a different gospel that's being preached to this world. And if judgment begins at... Now, there, understand something. There are a lot more than these few that I've mentioned. A lot more. They go on to... Uh, there's New Age-ism. There's Eastern mysticism. There is uh, transcendental meditation. There are yoga. There's all kinds of things going on in this world. Signs, miracles, and wonders. Modern prophecy. Uh, new revelations, all these kind of things are stuff. It's a false gospel. And, and, and 
Yeshua says in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 through 14, to enter through the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter through it. For the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life everlasting. And there are few that find it. That's a sad statement. Scary. But if judgment begins at the house of God, and we're taught that God loves us and forgives us, so therefore we don't have to worry about sinning, or we don't have to worry about anything because God loves us and forgives us, and we prayed that simple little prayer, then we're, if, if God, if everything's okay with God, and, and, and if there's no sin in, uh, that we have to worry about, then where does judgment come in? What's there to judge? If everything's cool and everything's okay, because everything's made right in Messiah, and understand everything is made right in Messiah. But, but we better be living way Messiah wants us to, the way Messiah commands us to in the Word of God. If judgment begins at the house of God and we believe that, that there's no, no sin held to our account, then where does judgment come in? There's nothing to judge. Is there? But we know that judgment is coming to the house of God. And do you know what God's going to judge? All those false doctrines that are preached in churches around the world. He's going to judge every preacher, every teacher that's ever preached or taught any of these false doctrines. He's going to judge me because I've stood in pulpits and I preach to people those very lies. Thank God, about 11 years ago, he woke me up, slapped me upside the head with a two-by-four, and said, look, thank you for what you've done for me, but now let's get it right. And I've been learning ever since to try and get it right. And stop preaching that the Torah has been done away with. And start not only preaching that it's still good, but start living your life like it's good. Start living your life in obedience to it. It's not a hard thing to do. It's actually a simple thing to do. He says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Guess what? You don't commit adultery. He says not to bear false witness. In other words, not to lie. Guess what? You don't lie. It's not a complicated thing to walk the Torah. It's a complicated thing to try to come up with an excuse for why you don't have to. That's where the complication comes in. But if judgment begins at the house of God, and Scripture tells us it does, then what manner of men and women of Messiah should we be? We should be on fire for God. We should be living our lives to please Him, not just while we're here at Beit Hallel, but 24-7. That's right. In our homes, on our jobs, in our neighborhood, in, every, in Walmart, wherever we're at, we should be living our lives in obedience to the will of God and living our lives in a way that's going to please Him. Because if judgment's going to begin at the house of God, and it is, He's going to judge us first. He's going to put His house in order so that mm. when Messiah comes, He has a holy house to live in. And that army that's going to follow Him 
that's going to rise to meet him in the air, to follow him to Jerusalem, to establish his kingdom, is going to be a holy army. It's going to be already tried and tested. It's going to already have judgment passed upon it. Mm. I don't know about you, but I want to be in that army. Absolutely. So therefore, I am going to live my life in a way that's pleasing to Him. I'm going to study His Word so that I can learn what it is that He expects of me. And then I'm going to do my best to do it. So that when judgment falls, <coughs> maybe I can be found faithful in a few things. Mm -hmm. And be told, enter into the joy of the Lord. Because if you don't hear those words, dread what you're going to hear next which is depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. Mm. Are those sad words? No. I don't want to hear him say that over me, over anybody that I love. So therefore, if judgment begins in the house of God as it does, then Father, make our hearts ready. Prepare us as your people to be ready for the judgment of God, which is coming upon us. Amen? Amen. All right. Click.